Welcome back to part two of making the Unimat a compound rest. So in this part we're going to make this unit, the moving arm. Let me get you through what we have here. First of all I've taped the areas I don't want to mill and a bit over. So we have a bit of a narrower place to mill. I'm using this digital indicator with a fixed magnetic mount. You can't use on a Unimat the on off version of a magnetic mount because of the base. Basically I'm using the pole over here, this thing. And the top is simply just too thin and small for the larger magnetic mounts. There we go. Right, let's uh, set up the indicator, get 0.3 millimeters deeper and continue the process. I'm not going to film all that, it's going to bore you guys to death. See you in a few hours. Well, about three hours have passed and we have milled most of the material, not all of the material. So let's get these tape pieces off. I wanted to show you my setup. I'm holding that by hand now, so sorry for the vibrations, but I goof up the goofed up over here a bit, but we're still within parameter. We still have a lot of material to remove on the side, so we're good to go. Now, as for my indicator, Right, so this is my indicator. It's right now on zero, but uh, you can see the setup as is. Right, I got this trip. This is a 0.13 millimeter stock. And we'll just trim it to size. All right, let's put it there. That's actually pretty decent. I'm going to stick with that. I'm going to be happy with that. I'm going to stay with that. I think it's uh, more or less the best I can do on the Unimat. This uh, really, really low cost high speed steel does work really, really well. Let's get the Woodruff cutter. I'm going to be starting with this cutter, which is a Woodruff T-slot cutter. I'm 
and then I'm going to continue this with this now that's I think that's the only thing I didn't actually think about my mistake I should have gotten a bigger t-slot cutter a big bigger woodruff cutter We have a 2 by one millimeter cut. 0.1 millimeters off the floor. And you can see the raised area over there. Really nice cut. Really smooth cut. Right. I'm going to do that on the other side. So first of all, this cutter is cutting really well. I can feel it's still razor sharp. No dull sections whatsoever. Cuts really, really well and it's pretty amazing considering the price and it's made in China and all that. It really nice work. I'm very pleased with that. That's the first time, by the way, I'm cutting with a Woodruff key cutter or slot cutter. So we need to raise it by one millimeter, but before before we do raise it, I want to lower it by 0.1 millimeter and just do the bottom properly because the first cut, I didn't want to have too many contact surfaces with the bottom and the side as well. So we cut just raised by 0.1 millimeter. Now I do want to touch the bottom ever so lightly. I'm not going to apply any pressure whatsoever. I just want to hit the bottom. Normally I'd order uh, a brand new 3x3 cutter, Woodruff key cutter, not junk Chinese Dremel cutter, and be done with it. But uh, <laughs> we're not exactly cutting it uh, normal here. Okay, we're shy over 20. And I did plan on 0.1 millimeter overhang just to make sure. Look at that thing. Does it slide in? Yeah, well, it does. That's kind of funny. Seems that the width here is too. <laughs> It's a bit, it's a bit too small for the width of it. And we're touching. We're going to remove 0.1 millimeter and 0.1 millimeter, and here we go. So what do we do? Well, we have to give up, right? course not we got so now you can see the ways now right I think we're squarish enough. 
will pass. Proof is in the pudding. Let's see. We have a little bit of play there, but we're moving right back and forth. There it goes. <laughs> I'm definitely happy there. So thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Have a sweet day.